Hi there. Welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Catherine, and you're looking at the mess in my studio right now. Um, this, this is what I call my standing table um, because I have it high enough. It's really cool. You can get them at Ikea, and it's up high enough that I can stand to work at, as opposed to my sitting table that I can sit to work at. And I thought I would show, oh, and, and down here is Kirby. Kirby, say hi. There's Kirby playing with her toys. Um, Kirby has a little den underneath there. She likes it under there. So I thought I'd show you what I'm going to be working with uh, when I create this year's Christmas journals. I have pared down my Christmas ephemera to what is on this table. So what I create this year for my Christmas journals, and I will be showing them to you, uh, the books I've chosen, they're obviously not done yet, um, in a few minutes. These are all my, I call them cutter books. And these are all the books that I like to work from um, and I pull pages out of and fussy cut or use the whole folio of the page. And I've got, as you can see, some Jan Brett there. I have a couple of Jan Brett books. Um, her artwork is beautiful. Um, I have a lot of um, Victorian type books. You can get some cool um ephemera to fussy cut out of those. I have a couple of little golden books with the beautiful uh, Eloise Wilkins uh, illustrations in them. And these are my favorite and I really pared down and those are all the books I will work from if I'm going to uh, fussy cut from a book or pull a spread out of a book. In addition, this shelf right here, over here, and right there, are all my music books. So, and I do like to pull from the music books to pull Christmas carols and hymns um, and Christmas songs from there. And I also have two... Um, books of Handel's Messiah, which I love using in Christmas journals. So in here, this is um, thanks to Nancy's topping me up. I have quite a nice array of Christmas fabric to choose from. Um, I do have other baker's twine. I've got red and white baker's twine. I have that on my desk because I use that year round, but I have this fun ball of red and green and white baker's twine that I enjoy and then there's some little trims and things and there's a bag of trims and things here and and yeah there's jingle bells in there and same with in there some jingle bells so and here is um where I caved uh, a couple weeks ago and Got some Tim Holtz, so you'll be seeing some of that in this year's books. This is my only, <laughs> this is my only Christmas washi tape. I'm going to heat it up. I'm going to pause for a second because I think somebody's into something. Well, my goodness, she was just chewing on a toy. Can you imagine a puppy actually just chewing on a toy? Um, these haven't been used in a year, so I will be warming them up with a blow dryer to make sure that, um, they'll peel nicely. Usually that'll do the trick. I have a, um, sort of a packet here, and this is just all scraps and pieces and, um, napkins, pages out of books. Maybe I was going to use them in a previous journal. There's, as you can see, pieces of scrapbook paper, offcuts from scrapbook paper, um, 
I was very, very blessed with gifts of Christmas scrapbook paper uh, in the past. Um, I guess it might even be two years ago now that uh, that happened. So I have some of that's in here. Uh, some of that is, a lot of that is over here. And uh, there's more napkins. Um, I was also gifted quite a few wonderful um, whale tail tabs. These are some cool little Victorian type sparkly things that Nancy was going to get rid of. And uh, thank goodness she threw them at me across the table. That was from our little Crafty Crush Christmas uh, extravaganza um, last year. It was great sitting across the table and getting stuff thrown at me because it was good stuff. Um, and in here, let me try and lift up, but I'm short, is again, um, vintage Christmas cards, vintage postcards, um, again, wonderful, uh, generous people sharing Christmas, um, little tiny ideals books that were in happy mail and, more things that I've already fussy cut, so I have them already in one of my CD cases that I like doing. My favorite little uh, Bell's Nickel type Santas. It's a garland that I had in my Christmas decorations that I stole out of the Christmas decorations, and I love using them. And then there's some more books here that I like using. Um in Christmas journals. This one is um, a really old 1957 Good Housekeeping. In November, so it actually covers Christmas uh, in it. And then there's a few more back here. There's another uh, December, I think. Is it December? Yes, December. This one's British, so I love this one. That one's those ones are great for laxative ads and, you know, does your baby have wind kind of ads. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And uh, I have two of this book and it's a great book. So if you ever, if you're Canadian and you spot this one, uh, grab it because it's got, um, it's got all kinds of good photos and uh, advertisements from way back in the day in our beautiful country let me put that back and um this is pages as you can see christmas magazine and book pages so this is um my plastic holder folder um, that I use throughout the year if I happen to find a page that I think, oh, wow, that would be good in a Christmas journal. Like, say it's out of a Sears Roebuck, but it's a toy page. That's great for Christmas, and I'll put it in here and just stash them away so that I know that I'll use them at Christmas time. So I have that in here as well. And I have some doilies here, and um, the rest of my doilies are way over, tucked in the side there, upright. So um, I do have, because I use doilies year-round, but I do love using them in Christmas things. Oh, and here's the um, birch bark wrapping paper that I just found uh, just this past week that you'll remember in a thrift haul. Okay, so this, uh, when you see what I'll be making this year for my Christmas journals, this is what I'll be making it from. So, um, except for this box, everything else has been found at thrift stores, has been found at second from secondhand sources or else uh, has been very generously gifted to me in happy mail um and that's what makes it fun so to just come up with a 
a pretty journal that still has festive feeling to it. Um, and as you know, I like my journals to have plenty of room for writing. I do create my journals with the intention of uh, someone having room to write their thoughts and feelings and memories and recipes and and uh, all the wonderful things that they did over the course of their holiday season, whatever holiday it is they celebrate. So now I'm going to uh, pause for a moment and I'm going to set up over at my desk and I'm going to show you the books that I've chosen uh, to uh, hopefully I can get them all done uh, to become uh, Christmas journals for this year for uh, out of my little Sunnyside studio here. So hold on and we'll be at the desk in a second. Okay, so we're over on my desk. I actually might sound clearer now. I've got my microphone on, so hopefully um, the volume is a little better. I apologize as well if it was jittery over there. I'm not good on the hand-holding. Um, I thought of a few other things. There are certain items that I use year-round. I love, I love gold thread year-round. I love baker's twine year-round. And I love um, gold embroidery floss type threads year round, and uh, as well um, things like sari, sari silk. I have that in ivory, gold, and burgundy. I love using that year round, and I also didn't show you all my various laces because I use them year round and I will be accessing those usually because I aim for an an old kind of book especially at Christmas time. Um, I tend to veer towards ivory colored laces uh, unless I'm doing a, um, a salute to a Christmas uh, goddess <laughs> kind of book with the, you know, a 40s, 50s, and 60s kind of feel. Then I'll go into the bright colors for those. I don't have a lot of bright colors left. So, and that's okay. I'm not, I'm not in the mood this year. So here's the first question that's on everybody's mind. Thank you for all the feedback, everyone. You were uh, wonderful. I appreciated everyone's opinions and thoughts and ideas on changing um, the roundabout papers into a Christmas journal. And uh, I think you're going to be shocked to find out that I've actually decided not to. And I thought good and hard about it. And my gut just kept saying to me, this journal needs to just be a journal. It's so pretty, and it needs to um, it needs to continue on with what I intended it for it to be. So it's going to go by the wayside for a little while um, because I'm in a Christmas mood. So um, I'm sorry to disappoint anyone um, because I for a little while I thought, yep, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it a Christmas journal. And uh, something in the back of my mind just kept saying, that's not what you intended for it to be. And uh, so, roundabout papers is, uh, oh, I wonder who that is. No, it's nobody's there. Daddy's not home yet. Come lie down. My guard dog. <laughs> Didn't she sound tough? <laughs> oh, I better put my timer on. There we go. So, drum roll, or, or my Griswold drum roll. That, that was pathetic. Um, I have a couple of books that I have started in previous years and then... Um, didn't finish, and I'm still holding that possibility 
this year, especially with this puppy. I haven't got a whole lot accomplished this year. I must say, I honest to goodness thought that uh, working in a studio with a puppy would be easier than it is. I naively, naively thought that, um, oh, I'll still just be able to work and she'll just tumble around and play in my studio while I work. And um, you know what? I should have known better. I've had a puppy before. I've only had one puppy before. All our other dogs have been rescued as adults. But I should have known better. <laughs> Anyhow, she's doing great now, but she's still very much a puppy. She's still only eight months old. So um, I'm, go I'm going to continue to enjoy her puppyhood and uh, look forward to her mature adulthood. And in the meantime, I've been wanting to make a journal out of this book for quite a while. This is not even a Christmas book, so I'm not sure why they put this picture on the front cover because it's a beautiful little Victorian child, a little girl, and she's holding a bundle of uh, holly and, and holly berries and she's uh, got a little red cap on and you can see there's a red dress underneath her long cloak and there's snow. It, it looks Christmassy to me but it's actually um, mythology it's this it's the story of the golden apples the three golden apples um with pegasus there's pegasus and uh by nathaniel hawthorne it's old it's 1918 so it's over 100 years old i do like the end papers i'm toying with trying to save the end papers because even the end papers are Christmassy. I really don't understand what this publisher, whether this was all by accident. Now this is already um, a bit of a mess, but I can do here what I did in Samuel Titmarsh and I could carefully remove this page and put it back in its place and just recover that. And if any damage occurs to this in the meantime, when I take out the text block, I can do likewise with this page that has these little, all these little children wearing their little winter caps. Um, it's, it's a strange, strange book. It has, from what I know about the story of the, th the golden apples, the, th the three golden apples, it's not a Christmas story. I could be wrong. Please correct me if you know. And I, I did a quick look up, and uh, but it's going to be, it's going to fit. The cover will fulfill its destiny. <laughs> and part of what I'm thinking to deal with this, it's so pretty, but I can't have it called the golden apples. There's nothing on the spine, which is fine. So I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is, this might not be the one I use, but I, I'm thinking I'm going to run some lace down, down this side, like so, and then maybe some bridal lace over there and I'll still let a little bit of the gold peek through. It's a junk journal so I it's never my intention to completely hide the fact that this book once had another life. So I'm thinking about this. I, I have a couple of other ideas um, that all involve running um, either ribbon or lace just down that panel and uh, seeing what I can do with um, this. All of the book plates I have that I tried to put on sideways, I really didn't like the look of it because you might think, oh Catherine, Catherine, you might be yelling at your screen right now telling me to put a book plate over that and put it on sideways, but 
it looks weird. So, book number one. I'm not sure what order I'm going to get started on these. Uh, here's uh, book number two. It's called Past and Present. And I thought, uh, by Thomas Carlyle, and I thought, what a great title for a, a Dickensy kind of book. Um, this is one of those books that um, they put out just a gazillion of them. You'll see them all the time. It's not rare. I have quite a few. I actually have a red one. I almost did the red one. The red one's spine is in really, really bad shape. This one still at least has some nice gold on it. So I think I'll just do my best to repair that little bit here and maybe glue some lace on there. Um, but it's old too, 1911, so it's over 100 years old as well. I love, like I said, old books for Christmas. I just love doing. This one I got started on before and uh, it got put away. This one's going to need a lot, a lot of TLC. Um, it had that tucked into it, whoever owned it previously. I researched the salutation in it because in here, in 1883, it says, To my son Marmaduke from his loving mother, Mary Smith. And I was actually, because a name like Marmaduke, I can't let that go. And I was able to find Marmaduke. And um, uh, this salutation up here, because it was given, uh, Mary received it as a gift. I think it was from her sister-in-law. Um, gave it to her as a gift, and then she gave it to her son, Marmaduke. <laughs> so it, that'll have to go back in the book somewhere. <laughs> um, but I did end up finding Marmaduke with a name like that. That's not too hard to find. They started off their life in Prince Edward County, Ontario, which is a beautiful area of Ontario. Um, it's sort of like a peninsula that goes out uh, on the north shore of the lake. And uh, boy, did they make some nice wine out in um Prince Edward County and they it's a it's an area very similar that I've heard about in Pennsylvania where they paint quilt patterns on the barns and uh, so there's a barn trail you can go along in uh, Prince Edward County but it's a pretty uh, pretty little book and very old and I just thought this would make a really dainty little um, a little dainty little Christmas journal that maybe someone could just use as a prayer journal or thoughts for their, you know, leading up to their Christmas, whatever their morning routine is. Maybe they want just to write a few words every morning or something. Um, you're seeing right there, 1857. It's old. And as you can see here, I got started ahead of time with it. I was hoping to get it done. I've already fortified the spine from the inside and re-fortified it. I'm going to have to do something here because the cloth is lifting. And uh, I'm not going to be able to save that. That's going to have to be covered somehow. And um, that's why you were seeing this lace. I'm thinking I'm going to um, literally glue it right down onto the cover and maybe run some lace over it to uh, tie it shut. And it will be a pretty little book that maybe a lady would carry with her to, to, to church or something, you know. I don't know. That's where my imagination starts going a little wild. Um, so... I want to work on that one. I'm going to try my best not to go overboard with pages so that the owners, with Christmas journals, I do anticipate that the the new owners will want to um, put in their own ephemera as well. So I'm going to have a little fun, create the atmosphere 
um, but still leave a lot of blank pages. Um, this is just from a series of books, the Waverly novels, um, but I liked it because this one's called o Old Mortality, and again, I thought this one might make a, a cool Dickens kind of book. And this is the kind of book that I would find a painting to put on with um, brads and a book plate. Um, this one I'm sort of, this one's a hopeful one. I don't know if I'll get to this one or not. I think I'm going to cover up where it says Waverly Novels. And I think what I'm going to do is create a frame. Um, I'll cut it down a bit, use gold um, gilding wax and make it look like a, an old frame and we can put a new title inside it. And I think that'll look kind of cool. Um, this one is, it's, a, it's, it's not young either. It's an oldie too, 1898. So I have hopes for that one. But as you can tell, I don't think I've made this many journals all year. So in order to get these done in the next six weeks or so, some people might be getting their Christmas journals in time to use them for next Christmas. <laughs> ah! I think my favorite one, you know me, you know I love A Christmas Carol, and I usually like to devote a book to um, My Heart Goes Out to the Cratchits. It just does. I feel like I must have been a Cratchit in a previous lifetime. Um, anyhow, um, I want to create this book into Mrs. Cratchit's um, church book. And this is a really old book. It's actually in French. There used to be a convent here in uh, the town where I live. So I find some cool stuff at my Vincent de Paul. And they obviously have put it on the sale rack because they've looked it over, considered it, and said, nope, it's time for it to move on. And uh, it is uh, from 1886. It's about the life of St. Anne. And St. Anne um, apparently was the mother of Mary, the mother of Jesus. So, and I just, I loved this cross on the front. I don't want to touch the front. I might put some lace down the spine. The spine's going to need some help. It's got some aging here that I'm simply going to fortify and make sure it's strong, but I'm not necessarily going to cover that up. I want this to look old. I want this to look like Mrs. Cratchit just wore this out in use, whether she was writing in it, writing her thoughts in it, writing, saving love letters in it, saving, you know, uh, her worries and her prayers for her children in it. I don't know yet, but I predict that this one's going to be have a bit more of a religious slant to it, obviously. Um, so I'm, this one I'm particularly looking forward to uh, working on. And again, so they're little, but they're thick, you know, especially these two. They're, they're tiny, but mighty. Um, and uh, so hopefully I'm going to be able to show getting a good portion of them done. I'm going to have to decide... Um, which one's going to get done first? Who, who gets the knife first? And it might very well be um, this little green one since it already, since I already do have the text block out and I've already got a head start. This is my work here and I've already taken up the, uh, the end papers so that I can put new end papers in. Um, 
again, I'm torn. I'm also uh, open to the possibility of stitching around with uh, the sewing machine, of just gluing this back down as best I can, and then just sewing around the edge in a messy way, maybe putting some lace onto it and shabby chicing it. Um, rather than doing too much, that's that's a bit overwhelming. Not sure. So that gives you a little idea of uh, there's Marmaduke, Marmaduke Terrell from Wooler, Ontario. He moved over there, and then he eventually moved out west. So that was the last place I found him was out west. They were. Um, as was common back then when everything was being colonized, handing out land. If you could get it cleared in an, in an amount of time, you could keep this land. So um, Marmaduke ended up out there. So, so those are um, those are the books. I love when. Uh, you can see that they've just used up old papers on spines. I recently got contacted um, from someone who she found an amazing uh, spine inside and the spine where they had taken the time to put really pretty paper on the inside of a book that she was working on. Wow, it was beautiful. So there's uh, there's the plans. Let me know what you think. Uh, no laughing if I don't get. Uh, let, let's see if I can get one of these done. Hmm? Let's aim for one. And if I can get one done, then maybe we'll aim for two. <laughs> can we do two? <laughs> and we'll see. <laughs> we'll go from there. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing what my plans are. I already have them written in the back of my book here. And uh, we'll see how far I get. I know next Christmas I'll have more time. Next Christmas I will have an adult dog. <sighs> Sorry, I was just looking around for her because it was way too quiet in here. And she's sound asleep under the standing table in her little den under there. Um, actually being a good little girl. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today, everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Say hi down below, and I'll say hi back. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>